Hello everybody and welcome to the Satan and Sons YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about a very special goddess. A goddess who will always have a very deep place in my heart and that is the Lady Lilith. Lilith is an amazing goddess. I see her as both a goddess and a vampiress. I don't classify her as a demon. I do have a very structured system for classifying dark entities and this is because in the past so many different types of beings were labeled as demons. And so I'm trying to steer away from that and trying to kind of bring back the individuality of the different types of entities that you'll find in the darkness. So I do not classify Lilith as a demoness, but I do classify her as a goddess and a vampiress. So Lilith though, this amazing, amazing lady. She is one of female empowerment. She is one of, well, masculine empowerment as well. Because remember, the power of the strong, confident, divine feminine can also balance the divine masculine. So Lilith is not just for women to work with. She can also be for men. She is a deity of incredible power and incredible strength. She is one who has walked the darkness of her own heart. She has been through the trials and the tests of time, and she has risen as a goddess in her own right. So the story of Lilith was that she was Adam's first wife, and she did not want to submit to him. She did not want to submit to him at all. My understanding and experience with the story is that she left. She left Eden. She was created as Adam's equal, and so she chanted the sacred words and was able to fly out of Eden. She ended up at the Red Sea where she met with demons, where, from my understanding, she met with Samael, and the two unified. They became united as one, for Samael had no problem with her strength and charisma. He had no problem with her being a strong and powerful, fierce woman. So they laid together in sacred union. Unfortunately for Lilith, leaving Eden did not was not something that was so easily put aside by the righteous angels, and she was followed. Her children that she bore at the Red Sea were murdered, and the angels slaughtered them. It's interesting to think about this story because Lilith is portrayed as the bad guy. She's often seen as the baby killer and the monster of the night, as one who will destroy those and, you know, come and seduce men and crush the innocent. When, if you look at that side of the story, it was actually Lilith who was victimized. Lilith was the one who had her children murdered before her eyes. Lilith was the one who was told that she was wrong and bad. So, I mean, I'm a mother of two children, and I can tell you if anybody murdered my children before my eyes, um, the wrath I would unleash upon them would rival that of Lilith's. <laughs> it would be a blood slaughter for all. So I can see her point of view. It's really interesting um, when you consider the point of view of the one who was actually, you know, wronged. I mean, we're told, you know, to be kind and gentle and turn the other cheek. But in actuality, you know, if somebody does something to you, you have every right to defend yourself. And if somebody hurts your family, well, I say you have every right to strike back against them. You know, it's not, it's not right that somebody can wrong you and not feel the repercussions for it. So in Lilith's case, she actually endured incredible pain and sorrow and hardship, and she rose from it. She rose as a warrior, as a mother, as a goddess, as a witch, as a maiden, as a crone. She rose as a powerful, powerful deity. She rose as a queen of the night. She rose as one of great magic, great power, great seduction, great charisma. She is a goddess of magnetism. She is a goddess of the night and a goddess of power and magic. The power and magic that comes from lust and sex magic. She is a very captivating and alluring vampiress. And she is one that can bring confidence and courage to the individual who works with her. 
my experience with Lilith was absolutely incredible. See, at Lilith, I went through a time period in my life where I was very shy. I actually grew up very shy. The my if my old self could see me in front of ca the camera like this and you know not even stuttering, she'd be like shocked. She wouldn't even know who I was. She'd be like, who are you? You're not me. You're not my future me. Well, yes, I am. Ask me. Um, so, you know, I was very shy. I was very reserved. I was very, I like to stay in the shadows. I like to stay in the back and just kind of do my thing. I didn't really like to step out there. I didn't really like to get in the spotlight. I was very private in my practice. I was very private in what I did. And I had been wronged. I had been wronged by an individual. I had been wronged by somebody and um it was a very it was a very interesting situation because it broke me in a lot of ways and in a lot of ways i needed to be broken it also showed me the cruelty of the world and also the necessity for me to be able to defend myself and for me to be able to stand up when somebody you know tried to mess with me and you know not just take it lying down. I mean, I used to be very good at just being like, yeah, whatever, you know, and walking away. But there are some times where you need to fight. There's some times where you need to stand up for yourself. So I started working with Lilith because I knew that I had this in me. I had this warrior spirit in me and I had to unleash it. I had to awaken it and I had to rise it. So enter Lilith. What ended up happening was I did have an astral experience with Lilith and um, she beat me up, literally, like she beat me up. Like it was, it was one of the most volatile astral experiences I've ever had. Like when you're in the astral plane, you actually feel things. You actually feel the blows. You feel the punches. You feel the claws in you as well. So I remember um, my experience with Lilith was basically her beating me up. It was a very, it was a very intense experience. And what it was doing was it was, she was basically doing that. And what she was doing was she was basically pushing all my buttons so that I would strike back, so that I would fight back, so that I would rise in my power and fight back. That's the thing. When you are stay, when you stay in the shadows, you don't have the opportunity to really stand in your power. It's quite easy to just sit at the sideline and do nothing. When you are being confronted in the way I was confronted, you have no choice. And it's interesting because that confrontation mirrored what was going on in my life right then and there. It mirrored what was happening. And it was an internal struggle between me and my confident warrior self and my old self, who was quite happy to stay in the shadows. but. Where I was going in life, I couldn't do that anymore. I couldn't. And so the experience, so after a certain point, I fought back against Lilith. I fought back and we wrestled and I finally just lost it. I lost it. And everything, everything I was afraid of just shattered. And then I unleashed my full self in the astral. Obviously it didn't hurt Lilith, she's a goddess, but the point was for me to embrace that. The point was for me to awaken that side and to challenge her, to not be afraid, to not cower, to, to face her at her level and be willing to go forward. And from since that experience, I have been much more courageous and much more warrioristic in my approach. I have also been much more willing to confront things when I've been wronged or stand up for even my beliefs or believe or stand up for even my work. I mean that's the thing, you know, standing up for my work and being proud of it, just being proud of what I put out there. People like to cut you down. They like to tell you things. They like to, you know, they like to try to confine you in your box. Like, I'm sorry, you're not working with demons the right way. You're not working with this the right way. I love how people try to define the left-hand path. It's so fantastic. It's like the whole point of the left-hand path is freedom and diversity and finding your spot on the left-hand path. And it's really funny when people try to tell me that I'm doing things wrong. As if, you know, the rest of the world isn't judging all of us as the exact same level of lunacy. You know, most of the people who walk around in their everyday life who don't have the connections that we do, they look down on all of us the same. They see all of us as crazy. So I don't understand the need to pick holes in other people. I really don't. It's one of the things that greatly confuses me about um I think it's just human nature, honestly. It's when you find something, you feel that your way is the only way. Now, 
A person has every right to stand up for their work. That's the thing. If it's their work, if it's their baby, they have every right to stand up for it. But what you don't have a right to do is to tell another person how they are walking their spiritual journey. That is the difference. If somebody is has up their path and they're passionate about it and they're empowered by it, nobody has the right to tell that person that they're wrong. That's one of the aspects of the left-hand path is that essence of freedom and that essence of letting people explore and letting people uncover what is right for them. During my experience with Lilith, it became very apparent to me that I needed to stand up. I needed to be a champion for my path and I needed to walk tall and walk with confidence. I needed to not shy away from things. I needed to not dull myself down. I needed to, in fact, stand up and be bolder, braver, and brighter. I needed to carry on. I needed to move forward. And even if the entire world was beating me down, if it was my path, I had to walk it and I had to move forward on it and I had to be willing to stand up for it. So it was a very empowering experience. Afterwards, we talked and um, I knew what she had done. Like I knew what the whole point was because the whole situation at the end, once I snapped and my mental state entered that place, I realized that um, I had been really holding myself back, that I had been really tempering myself and tempering my energy. And I'm not talking about just like the warrior spirit and the ability to defend myself, my creativity, my writing, my ability to put my ideas and thoughts out there. I had put up a barrier and I was holding myself back. So Lilith is really good at helping you from breaking free of your own shackles. We all have beliefs in our mind. We all have these, these programs inside of us that basically dictate to us what we can and can't do. I can do this. I can't do this. I can do this. I can't do this. I can't talk about this. You know, people will think I'm crazy. Well, guess what? People already think I'm crazy. People already think I'm crazy. If I was shunned by the entire community tomorrow of people who worked with demons, I wouldn't care. It's my path. And it is beautiful to me. And that's this type of strength and confidence you have to come at this with. You have to be able to believe in yourself and you have to be able to believe in your path. If you can't even believe in yourself and nobody else, nobody else is going to even take you seriously. Nobody is going to respect you if you can't respect yourself. And that's what Lilith taught me. Lilith taught me self-respect. She taught me that courage. She said, you know, I've always been good at being an individual. I've always been good at being the freak. I, in fact, liked it. I embraced the freak when I was um, growing up in school. You know, I liked being the weirdo, the one that was the oddball. I liked that. I was used to that. I was used to staying in the shadows. What I wasn't used to, though, was actually standing up and being like, hey, here I am. This is me. I wasn't used to that aspect of it, and I wasn't used to fighting back in the way that Lilith taught me. Lilith taught me some incredible life skills for this world. She taught me some incredible life skills for the path that I was meant to be on. She basically conditioned me and strengthened me and helped me to find my own core strength so that I could carry on. I have worked with Lilith quite a bit since that day, but that first encounter was incredibly impactful for me because it broke so many of the shackles of my own mind. It broke so many limiting beliefs that I have, and I just felt like I was a new person. I felt like I was completely transformed by it. I felt like I was a warrior. I felt like that spirit rose in me, that something in me broke so hard that I could never go back to who I was before. Those moments of transformation are absolutely beautiful. I don't lament the loss of who I was. I really don't. Instead, I embrace the person that I've become. I embrace that spirit. And I also embrace the path that I'm walking. It's not going to be easy. No path is. When you are following your core and your truth, you are going to be met with adversity all around you. You are going to be met with people who are trying to crush you and squish you and basically re define you by their parameters. Mammon always says to me, he says, when you are nobody, they will laugh at you. When you are growing, they will attack you. And when you are somebody, they will pretend they've been there all along. And that's human nature right there. You have to be willing to go through that though. Go through the trials and go through the conditioning. 
And that's what Lilith gave me. That was the gift that she gave me, was the power and the strength to go through that, the power and the strength to carry on, to move forward, to speak my mind, to speak my truth, and to not care what anybody says, to not care what anybody does. Even if the entire world turned against me, I would have my path with the demons, and that's all that matters. That's the type of strength I have moving forward, and that's the type of passion I have for this path. And it carries me in all areas of my life, not just spiritually, in business, in my personal life, in my creative ventures. This spirit follows me, and it goes with me. And that's a true integration of the physical with the mental, with the emotional, with the spiritual. That is where you integrate as a fully functional human being on this journey with your own soul, with your own essence, with your own lineage. You carry forward and you have that strength. You draw strength from yourself. You draw strength from those who support you. You draw strength from your spirit guides. You draw strength from those who you work with. In that moment when Lilith was attacking me, I was alone. I was completely alone. There was nobody else there. It was me. She taught me the strength that was within. She pushed me to awaken that strength and to rise in power. And I will always be grateful to her. I will be always grateful for the lessons that she taught me. Lady Lilith, I thank you so much for everything. For the lessons you taught me then and the lessons you still continue to teach me to this day. We actually do have our article on Lilith posted on our Demons and Demonology site. If you want to take a look at it, I will leave a link below so that you can see it. And I will leave the video there. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And hit the little bell button so you'll always be notified when we have a future video coming down the channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I do read the comments. And one of your questions might be featured in a future video. Until then, though, I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!